God who loves us, that never leaves us, Lord God. Father, there are so many people out there that are hurting, that are dying, that are living life without you, and it's such a sad place to be, Lord God. I can't even imagine even taking one moment, one step without you. Father, we just thank you so much that you never leave our side. You are always there.
you know that God can move the mountains. And he has moved mountains in our own life. every mountain in your life.
all, he is still worthy. No matter how you're maybe feeling in your body right now, or if you have a lot of things on your mind, or times are stressful, or whatever it may be, it doesn't change the fact that he is worthy of our praise in this place. Amen. So as we continue to sing this song, just push that all aside in this moment. God, in spite of all that, you are still good. You are still on the throne. There is power in your name, and I choose to worship you. you this morning because you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of everything that we could give to you when we glorify your name. There is power in your name. There is healing in your name. There is hope in your name and we cling to that because we can. Father, we give you praise and we glorify you and we thank you for what you've done in this place and we ask that you continue to minister to us, continue to minister to our hearts as we call upon your name and as we remember who you are in our life. We glorify you. Church, give the Lord praise this morning. Church, give the Lord praise. All right, welcome to Lifeline Community Church. You guys can go ahead and be welcome to have a seat. Uh, we're so glad you're here this morning. Um, if this is your first or second time here or third or fourth and you haven't connected with us yet, we would love to connect with you. Uh, we think the easiest and best way to do that is for you to fill out a connection card. So on the chair located in front of you in the pocket, you'll find a little white paper, piece of paper and it says connection card. So if you pull that out, fill it out and take it to the Life Center after service, turn that in. We'll go ahead and hook you up with a free shirt uh, and we'll give you any information that you would like and we would just love to meet you. Um, here at Lifeline, we have something called the family room. 
Yeah, so we do have age-appropriate teaching and uh, classrooms for all kids age 0 to 12. But we also know that sometimes, you know, kids and parents want to stay together. And we welcome that. We love that. We absolutely really do think it's great. Uh, if your kid, though, starts to move around and you're feeling uncomfortable, like you need to leave, please don't leave. Just join us in the family room. It's located directly behind the Life Center. It's written on the door. It says family room. You can walk back there with your kid. Uh, or children, plurals, however many there are. Um, and there's comfy couches and the service is being live streamed and you can continue to enjoy the service together without feeling like you need to, sh you know, hush or anything. Um, and growth track, right after church today, 1230, there's a light lunch provided and child care provided. Growth track is happening. Growth track is where you're going to find out who we are and what we do, what we believe, what we're all about in the community, and it's how you plug in. So if you've been coming for a while and you feel like God really does have a purpose and a plan for my life and I want to do something, I want to give back, growth track is the answer. Go through growth track, 45 minutes, light lunch, child care. No reason why. There's no reason why you can't go. Perfect. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and take our tithes and offerings. Before the ushers uh, make their way, I'm sorry, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. We're not taking anything from you. There is no cover charge. It's not an entrance fee. We don't want your money. We're not asking for it. We do, however, want to provide opportunity to respond to the word of the Lord. We do believe that the word of the Lord says, if you are faithful to bring the tithe, the first 10%, then he says, I am faithful to bless the rest. That 90% of yours will be blessed and I will bless everything else in your life, not just your finances. So this is simply a, an opportunity to respond to that. Uh, there are several ways you can give of the tithe. That's the giving box located on the back wall, online at lifelinelodi.com. You can text any number to the amount on the screen. It's also located in your bulletin, and the ushers are going to be making their way by with giving baskets. Um, and Pulse, I have to talk about Pulse. It is our relaunch of the youth group happening every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. They just had... That was really quiet, so maybe there's not a lot of young people in here. Dad. Ah, Pulse is happening every Thursday night. There we go. There we go. There's the hype. I need a hype guy. That's Elliot. Elliot's the hype guy. Ah, 6.30 p.m. every Thursday. We just had our launch, and it was incredible. I've heard so many testimonies of just how much fun it was and the word being preached and just a safe place for, for teenagers. That's age 12 to 18 every Thursday, 6.30 p.m. And now I'm going to ask you, to, if you would, turn your attention to the people around you and say hello and hi and welcome. It's so good to see you to the one or two or three people surrounding you. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet and give three people a high five. Tell them you look so good this morning. He's going to need that. He's going to need that to play an A. No, the song after the service is an A. You got to leave it on an A. All right, everybody, if you would find your way back to your seats. There's a lot of love in the house tonight, until this morning. Man, it's so dark, it feels like nighttime. There's a lot of love here, but we're going to get started. As you're finding your way back to your seats, I want to go ahead and tell you about a wonderful opportunity. Now, if you're a man, can I hear a hearty hoorah? hoorah. That was kind of girly. Okay, let me hear you one more time. If you are a man, let me hear you say it. Hoorah. hoorah. That was a little bit better. See, we got men's camp coming right up from May 4th to May 6th. It is going to be Ugh, epic. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be amazing. You are going to love it. And let me just tell you, uh, David Carr, uh, he, was, uh, he was in the NFL. You heard of him. Uh, he's going to be one of our main speakers there. There's going to be man-sized portions of food. There's going to be a shooting range. There's going to be archery. There's going to be axe throwing. Basically everything a man needs and wants in his life. And it's, it's, so here's the, here's the deal. It's, it's $159 for these three days, which is as about as much as it costs to feed you anyways for three days. So you're basically breaking even, which is amazing. So if you want to get signed up to go to men's camp, Pastor Mark, would you please stand? Always clap someone down when they, yes, Pastor Mark, 
is a perfect person to talk to, or you can just head to the Life Center and talk to our friendly uh, life team. We got teams around here. Their life team can, can get you uh, helped out to do that. Or you can sign up online, uh, cpdfoursquare.org. That's another way to do it. Um, last thing before I leave this topic, if the money is the issue, uh, thank God we've got, uh, we've got tithers in the house. That, that's why we can actually help. If, if money is an issue for you, please don't let that be the reason that you don't come and sign up or you don't uh, get involved because, because we've got people giving, thanks to you, um, we can help. Thanks to your giving, we can help in that area. So please don't let that stand in your way. Second thing I want to share with you is that Love Lodi is coming up April 14th. April 14th is Love Lodi, and this is Lifeline Church, in case you didn't know where you were right now, Lifeline Church, and Lifeline Thrift, which is down the road, our sister organization, is on the docket for Love Lodi. So it's perfect. Love Lodi is basically when all the, the, the churches and, and charities in the, in, in the city come together to love their city. This is exactly what Lifeline has been put on this earth to do, so I would love to see you get involved in Love Lodi, and a lot of the work we're doing is in-house, so it's going to be great. Uh, it's awesome. Thousands of people get involved every single year, and so go ahead and sign up for that. You can sign up uh, in the back. You can sign up online, lovelodi.org. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Pastor Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Now, if this is your first time here, or if you are visiting, or if you've just been visiting for just a little while, you picked a great day to be here, and I want to just welcome you and tell you that God wants to speak a message of hope. He wants to speak a message of encouragement, and he wants to speak a message of love into your life today. If you believe that, say amen with me. Amen. When you say amen, it gets me a little bit more fired up. So if you're like, man, this guy's boring, it's because you're not saying amen enough. Come on with it. Ah, just kidding, just kidding. You guys are awesome, and I want to go ahead and get started. And so what I want you to do is find, if you brought your paper Bible with you, God bless you, and find your way to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And if you brought your iPhone or your superior Android device, go ahead and find your way to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And if you have the YouVersion Bible app, uh, we're on there. Uh, you can either find us under the events tab where it probably says Choices, which is the new series that we're starting this week, or it'll say Pass the Test, which is the title of my message this morning. Now, Pass the Test. I got a quick question for you. By a show of hands, by a show of hands, how many of you here have ever taken a test in your life? <laughs> go ahead. Go. Okay, there's some people that, you know, I need to talk to you after the service because there's a thing about being honest. Okay, I know we've all taken tests in our life. You know, I hate tests, but I also love tests. I hate them and I love them. I hate them because the pressure is real. And people are trying to judge me, and i got to take this test, and they're trying to me measure up. I'm trying to measure up to this. And so I hate that. I, I know all of us kind of feel that, oh, my gosh, it's a test. But I also love tests because tests give me the opportunity to flex my competitive side. I'm a pretty competitive person. Um, one of my friends called me this last week. One of my friends, he's in school right now, and he said to me, he's in school, and he said, uh, I just took my worst test ever. And he's competitive like me. I just took my worst test ever. But it was the best score in the whole class. I was like, dude, you are so full of yourself right now. <laughs> because he's competitive like me. Because a test gives us an opportunity to pass something. And to strive for something. That's why I love tests. Now, instead of a show of hands, no show of hands in the place today. Just give me a quick nod so that your neighbor won't see you. If you've ever been tempted to sin. Don't worry, I'm not looking. If you've ever been tempted to sin, <laughs> tempted to sin. Now, I know, I, I know we have, because every human being that's ever walked the planet has been tempted to sin at some point in their life. It's part of being human. It's part of being human. Even Jesus Christ, when he came to this world to, to bear the weight of our sins, he had to go through a season, a 40-day period of intense temptation, intense temptation. It's just part of being human. Temptation is something that we just have to struggle with. And there's nothing good about being tempted. Nothing good about it. It's something that we all have to deal with, and I know we've all been tempted. But here's the good news. And this is the scripture for the series that we're about to start. See, this series called Choices is about choosing the hard right 
over the easy wrong. There's, there's a hard right that we need to choose in our life, but there's also an easy wrong, or sometimes a few easy wrongs for every hard right. And so this, this message series is called Choices, Choosing That Hard Right. But here is the scripture that I want to show you about this series. It's 1 Corinthians 10, chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 13. The temptation in your life, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you could stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so you can endure. With every temptation, there's a way out. And that is good news for us. Because today, yesterday, tomorrow, sometime, we're going to be faced with temptation. And we're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to choose the hard right, the hard decision to do the right thing? Or am I going to choose that easy road, the easy way? Because the way to sin and the way to succumb into temptation is always easier. There's a way out from temptation. There's a way for you to win. If you've got any competitive bone in your body, there's a way for you to win over that. A way for you to live a victorious, undefeated life, undefeated from the powers that come against you. And I'm going to show you how today. I'm so excited about this message. I don't know if you could tell. But I am super pumped to give you these tools, to give you this experience that I've, that I've been through myself that will help you take those things that dangle in front of you and say, get out of here. I'm ready to choose this right path. And it has to do with these two words that I introduced to you this morning. Test and tempt. Test and tempt. They're similar, but not the same. Let's talk about testing first. And this is what I need you to know. Now, this might rock your world a little bit, but I want you to bear with me because I studied this pretty hard, and this is my result. Let's talk about testing. God will test your heart but not to punish you, to promote you. Listen to Proverbs 17, 3. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. See, there's, there's some people here today that you're going through something tough. You're going through something rough. You're going through a season of testing in your life. You're going through this period and this season where you're saying to God, please, Lord, would you stop all this stuff going on? But let me ask you a question. Why would you test the purity of silver and gold? To ascertain the value. See, this word, this word test in Hebrew, this word test in Hebrew is bahan. Um, I, didn't, I don't know if you came to church today to learn another language, but it's bahan. Everybody say bahan. bahan. See, the way I like to remember this word in Hebrew is I like, to, I like to make a little jingle out of it. So I went like this. Bahan na 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 na. Going through my testing like bah na 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 Put me through the fire like bah na 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 There was a sound bite? No sound bite. There's no song to help me with that. I got this. Don't worry. It helps you remember, man, that the Lord wants to put us through testing sometimes to purify our hearts. See, when you purify gold in fire, it doesn't only show you how much that gold is worth and show you how valuable that gold is, but it actually increases the value of that gold because the impurities in the gold are burned out. So you're going through a season of testing right now. You're going through a season of it feels like temptation and testing, and this is a, this is a hard thing, but that fire of testing is actually purifying your heart and actually bringing you to the place where you need to be, where God has called you to be, and he's burning out those impurities in you. So quit saying, God, I'm done with this test, but say, God, I can do this, but give me the strength. To endure this fire. Ba na 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 na. You can tell I'm just feeling this right now. Mm. Testing through fire, in fact, is not only testing, but purification that increases the value. So when you're going through testing, it's better to respond, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this testing that's leading to my testimony, that's leading to my promotion, that's leading to my acceleration in life because this testing actually wipes out, wipes out this purification by fire. This word, Bahan, the Lord tests the heart. He, he burns out that impurity. And it, it hurts a little bit sometimes, doesn't it? You know it does. You know. I know who I'm talking to today because I've been through that too. That testing, it hurts. 
it hurt. I've got two stories, one's from the Bible, one's from my own life. I'm going to start with the story from the Bible. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 24, and it's about, it's about two men. One of their names is Saul, one of their names is David. See, if you, if you haven't heard about these two people before, see, King Saul was the first king of Israel. Very first king of Israel, and he was a dirtbag. Dirtbag, he was junk. Nobody, well, they wanted him at first. See, this is what happened. The Israelites were like, give us a king, God. Give us a king, someone who's like the other nations. They got a king. I want a king. So, Lord, please give us a king. And he was tall, and he was handsome, and yeah, he just made a bunch of bad decisions, and he was kind of evil. But there was this other man named David who was a man after God's own heart. See, the Lord cried out, uh, uh, the people cried out to God after Saul was king for a little while, saying, you were right, you were right, he's no good. Send us someone else, send us someone good, right? They were trying to impeach him, but, I mean, there was nothing they could do about it. And so here comes David, and the Lord says, okay, here's someone, here's someone, I'll give you someone, a man after my own heart, and I'm going to anoint him king. But Saul was still a king when David was anointed to be the king after him. So as most dirtbags do, he said, I'm going to take care of this, dude, get out of here. So this is where we pick up the story. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, after Saul returned from fighting the Philistines, he was told that David had gone into the wilderness of En Gedi. Everybody say En Gedi. I just wanted to hear you say it. So Saul chose 3,000 elite troops from all Israel and went to search for David and his men near the rocks of the wild goats. At the place where the road passed some sheepfold, Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. He went to take a leak. Okay, that's just what happened. But it, as it happened, David and his men were hiding further back in this cave. Now listen to this. Listen to what happened. This, this is what we're talking about. David's in that cave hiding, and it just so happens that the guy whose place he's supposed to take walks up just within eyesight. He doesn't see him, but then turns around and goes, <whistles> big old bullseye on his back. <whistles> Don't see you. And David's men whisper to him this. They whisper, now's your opportunity. David's men whisper to him, today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy in your power to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut a piece of the hem of, of Saul's robe. See, David, David was different than Saul. Saul, he was just out for himself. He wanted to kill David because he just wanted to get people out of his way. Now there was, with David, Saul was definitely in his way. But David's thinking to himself, is this really the way I'm supposed to do it? I'm supposed to stab this guy in the back in order to take his job? Something doesn't seem right about this. David's conscience began bothering him. This is, this is the man after God's own heart. David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut off Saul's robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this to the Lord my king. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. That, my friends, is a test of all tests. Now, I, I can't say this with absolute certainty, but I'm thinking that, I, I don't know this for sure, but do you, I wonder if the Lord had something to do with Saul going into that cave at that time to say, all right, David, here's like your last, here's your last little bit. Are you going to grab him by the crown and slit his throat? Or are you going to do things my way and let me come through with you without being dishonest, without being scandalous? Now, history's already been written. David didn't do it, and Saul died on his own shortly after. And David became king, and everything was well and wonderful after that. Well, not exactly, but good enough. But what I can't tell you is I wonder what would have happened if David decided to kill Saul in that moment. I wonder how history would have been changed if, if David decided to choose that false blessing that got put right in front of him. Instead of following his integrity. Oh, see, I was going to call this message choosing integrity over false blessing, but that's a stupid message title, so I decided not to. <laughs> but that's basically what this whole thing is all about, and that, that same kind of thing happened to me recently, but I need you to know that it's often that we complain in the testing. Lord, this test is hard. We complain during the testing, but the testing is exactly what precedes the purification of our hearts that produces the testimony out of the test. 
That's exactly what God is trying to do. This happened to me in my own life. It's kind of petty. It might seem petty to you, but it felt big to me, all right? So I'm on my Dave Ramsey plan, okay? What that means, to those of you who don't know who that is, that means I've got envelopes for my money. That means if my personal spending money, I have an envelope. So if I spend all of the money out of that envelope, that means I got I to gotta scramble to put some money back in it, which means I've been on eBay a little bit lately. I've been selling junk I don't need so I can buy junk that I don't need. It's a mess, y'all. But I'm just trying to tell you, I was on eBay lately, and I put some stuff on there. It was the dumbest stuff. Nobody wants this stuff. It's a Wii game called Wii Fit. I mean... Talk about ancient, nobody wants this piece of plastic. I put it on there for $10. Can I get an amen? I'm like, let the Lord just bless me somehow through this. And wouldn't you know it, somebody clicked, buy it now. They bought that thing. I could not believe it. I told Tiffany, I'm like, can you believe, somebody bought this thing. I can't, I, I can't understand. And I was, I was singing that, 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 because I had that song stuck in my mind, uh, you know, the whole week. And so I printed the shipping label, paid for it. I don't know if you know how eBay works, but you just pay for the shipping label, get that. And I'm getting ready to mail that sucker out, because I'm trying to, you can't take it back. You know, you already did it. And I get a call from Michigan, and it's this little old lady saying, oh, um, I never used eBay before, but I clicked that by accident. And my grandson said he doesn't want that. And I already put a stop payment on my bank card. I'm like, you better watch it. <laughs> you better watch it right now. Because right on my profile it says returns not accepted. Lady, live and learn. You could try and sell it yourself. <laughs> That's what I was thinking inside. And then I remembered I was writing a message that week called <laughs> integrity over false blessing. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, you are so hilarious right now. I love it when the Lord preaches to me about my own message before I even get a chance to preach it. That's how I know at least something's going right. So I, the, the old salesman in me kicked in, you know, that customer service. I'm like, oh, well, you know, we all make mistakes. And so I'm going to go ahead and return that and eat that shipping cost. Mm -hmm, and I'm going to return that to you. And I, and I, hope, I hope your day is blessed. Because this, this is all about, it's small things, you know. The small things in life that lead to larger things. It's little tiny decisions that seem insignificant at the time, but every decision we make has a consequence. Every single decision we make leads to another. And I don't want to get tied up and bound up over $10. I don't need that in my life. I just don't. And I know you don't either. But they, they, it comes across so subtle. Oops, extra change at the check counter. But... You didn't know it comes out of their paycheck, but you're like, oh, thank the Lord. The Lord's been good to me. So you compromise your integrity over a false blessing. It's not a blessing at all. In fact, it's a test. It's a test, man. What about tempting? Let's get to the second word, tempting. It's similar but different. Similar but different. Listen to this scripture in James 1, verses 13 and 14. And remember, when you are being tempted... God, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. The Greek word for this word, tempting, that got used like five times in a row is perazzo. I got no song for that. There is no song. I looked, and there is no song. Perazzo. So now you're not going to be able to remember that Greek word. So it's all right, but the funny thing is about these two words, bahana, na, 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 and perazzo, is they're translated almost the exact same way, to ascertain the nature of something, to ascertain the value of something. And that's so funny. I thought, wait a second, God, the Lord tempts, t tests the heart, but he never tempts anybody. So I had to really look into this, and I spent all week trying to figure this out, and I got the answer. I, I think I have the answer here. There's a difference between... Me giving you a cupcake because I made this cupcake for you, and I want you to enjoy it, and I want to do something nice for you. And there's a difference between that and me handing you a cupcake because I know you're on a diet. You know what I'm saying? It's the same cupcake. It's a cupcake. But the giver and the intent changes the whole value of what's coming your way. God allows us to be tempted because it, it builds us up. 
it creates something new in us. It purifies us. It takes us to a new level. The devil wants to tempt you so that he can kill you, so he can kill your hopes, so he can kill your dreams, so that he can kick you off of that diet or that reading plan that you've been on. So he's going to send things your way to mess you up. He's going to send things your way to mess you up. And it's awful. And no one likes it, and it feels horrible. But this is hilarious. I got examples from the Bible and my own life. Here's the one from the Bible. You want to know the funny part about this? It's the same guy, King David. King David. You know what that means? That means that somebody that, that passes one test can, can, can fail in a temptation, but there's always redemption. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Verses 2 through 4. Now remember, this is not a test from the Lord. This is a trap from the enemy of his soul. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. Late one afternoon, after his midday rest. Oh, big fat cat king. No, I think I'm going to rest all day. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out. He got out of his bed and was walking on the roof of his palace and looked over the city. And he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. She was probably average pretty, but there's something in that moment that makes that thing seem irresistible. What is it about temptation that is so tricky like that? In the moment, you can't keep your hands off of it. But right afterwards, woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was, and he was told she's Bathsheba, the son of Elam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent a message to get her, and when she came to his palace, he slept with her just like that. Fast. Traps are fast, y'all. They are quick. They happen and they're over before you know it. And the sting is the only thing that lasts. The consequence is the only thing that lasts when it's a trap. It's a trap when we're tempted. Did you notice how fast that was? And they're meant to spring quickly so you don't have a chance to see how deadly it is. Some of the most devastating things that happen to us or by us happen in the blink of an eye. They happen so fast. Now, the big difference I need you to know between a test and a trap is the intent. The intent. God will let you go through a test in order to build you up. But the devil wants to trap you. God allows tests to purify and promote, and the devil sets traps to kill you. A falling into a trap decays and destroys what could have been. I went through a trap. It, it was so it was so crucial in my, in my walk with Jesus. It, I was so fresh, and I was walking into my calling of, of being a leader and being a pastor, and I went to my pastoral licensing interview. This was like six years ago, and I, that's right. I've only been a pastor technically for about six years, and I went to that interview, and I did bad. I did so badly. I don't know what happened. One thing led to another, and then I answered one question weird, and I was like, oh, that wasn't right. And then the whole thing went downhill. You ever been in an interview like that? You ever been in a situation where it's like, I'm just not doing good right now. Can we do this tomorrow? Because it's not going well. And it, went, and it just didn't go very well, and the reports came back from the interview, not qualified, not good enough, um, not leadership material. Maybe he doesn't have the call. And I began to feel grumpy. And I began to feel tempted to have an attitude. See, sometimes, sometimes the tempting is just in what attitude you bring to the table. Because I knew the calling God had on my life. I had seen visions of grandeur for this church and for, you know, my personal life. And I've, I've seen all these things. And then these reports are coming back. I'm like, no, that's not right. And, and the temptation was inside of me to get sour to get sour i don't know if any of you have felt like that before where maybe you're at work and you get turned down for that promotion but you know it should be you the temptation is just to get sour now this wasn't exactly like that but i had that same feeling inside where i felt man something's not right so what this is what happened this is what i did and this i, I had to learn this over the course of a couple years because this was, this was something that was going on in me. This is what I did. I took that temptation to feel that way, to think that way, and I turned it into a test that I could overcome. Hmm, interesting. I took that temptation and turned it into, in my mind, a test that I could overcome to get to the next level in my life. I started thinking to myself, man, I'm going to get through this and no matter what anybody says no matter what anybody does i'm gonna put my best foot forward i'm gonna give these people the best i got no matter what they call me no matter what they do i am gonna go for it all the way because this is now a test 
and I'm going to study, and I'm going to go for it. Sometimes things that happen to us can stir something up in us so that we rise to a different level in our life. What started as a temptation turned into a test that led me to a testimony of where we are today, places that we've never dreamed we would come, places in, in the church that we never believed we would come. See, the best traps are small and unassuming. It's an attitude, a feeling. I'm going to feel this way. I'm going to do this. It's sneaky. It's a direct message on social media late at night. Ooh, it's an opportunity to fudge the numbers on your taxes just a little bit. It's tax season, so I know you're, all, you're like, oh, don't look at me right now. But it's an opportunity to say, well, how much did you earn? Well, it's right here on this paper. Well, how many miles did you drive? Uh, 10,000. Or report this or report that. It's the opportunity to fudge the numbers just a little bit so you get that extra $300. It's that extra change that comes across the, the, the checker's table to you. And you say, oh, this is cool. I get to buy a da 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 now. The best traps are small. And it leads to even more and more compromising. More and more compromising. It's not always like David, a naked lady on a rooftop. <laughs> it's not always like that. Most of the time, it's little opportunities to compromise under the illusion that, that, that something will satisfy you. See, this is, what, this is what the devil likes to do. Okay, is this on here? Oh, yeah, I got to show you this. This is what he does. He's like, well, I'm just going to put something out there to see what happens. I'm just going to put something out. Hey, what's up, guy? <laughs> Haven't seen you in so long. You're looking. Have you been working out? Have you been working out? Your, your wife is so lucky. Oh, you, you know, just any time you need to talk, you just let me know. Oh, the temptation is real. But maybe that's not for you. Maybe your temptation is something more like, oh, come back here. Oh, temptations are sneaky like that. They just get away from you. Maybe your temptation is more like, you know, if I just, if I just fudge those numbers a little bit. If I just fudge those numbers a little bit, I'll get an extra $500 on my tax return. Remember what I called this message? Remember that dumb title I was going to call this message? Integrity over false blessing. The best traps are under the illusion of blessing. Oh, the Lord wants you to have this money that you didn't earn. The Lord wants you. Well, the opportunity's right there. Might as well do it. But here's my point this morning, is that you can take temptations like that, and you can turn them in your mind into opportunities to pass a test that's going to lead to promotion in your life. That's what I did. That's what I had to do. Here's the key. Anytime, this is the bottom line, this is the application, this is the one thing I want you to have with you when you leave here this morning. Listen up. Anytime you're faced with anything that will compromise your integrity, see it as an opportunity to pass to your next level. Man, that gets you hunting for some things. Come on, direct message me, lady. Blocks. Come on, give me some extra change right here. I'll give it back to you and then throw a five on top of it. Man, because I'm going for this thing. When I'm hit with opportunities to fail, I'm going to see them as opportunities to get promoted to my next level. Listen to this. Your next level is on the other side of the test you're facing right now. I know some of you are facing a test right now. I know some of you are feeling hard-pressed, pressed on every side, like, God, why? Why am I struggling with this? My, my husband's having to do this, or my wife's having to do that, and my, my life, my job, my family, my career, whatever it is, this test that you're facing right now, facing that test and getting over that testing, making it through that test, making the hard right and not the easy wrong is going to promote you in your spiritual journey to the next level that you don't know how to get to on your own. It's facing those, op those oppositions, those temptations. So let me tell you how I look at it. I don't care if it's coming from the devil. I don't care if it's coming from God. I'm taking every temptation or testing or whatever, and I'm going to kick it in the face and say, I'm passing you. I'm coming after you. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Come at me. Devil, come on. Give me another opportunity. What's that just popped up on my screen? Blocked. What's that coming my way? Some check with not my name written on it? Send it back with an extra $10. I don't care. Come at me. I'm looking at every single one of these little temptations as tests that I get to pass. 
that I get to move in to my next level. Because I'm trying to win. If you've got any type of competition inside of you, any bone, any hair follicle, any, anything that's competitive at all, use that to say, here we go. Here we go. I'm coming after this. I'm going to win in my faith. I'm going to win in my walk with Jesus. I'm not saying it's all in your own strength. Man, sometimes you just have to pray, God, give me the strength. But what, what this does, what this does is it takes us from being on the defensive you know, whoa, stuff coming my way, left and right. Oh, no, minefields everywhere. I feel like I can't even leave the house because I'm going to get tempted. Takes us from being on the defensive and putting us on the offensive. I'm going out today. And if something comes my way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat it. I'm going to beat it. Man, if that lady calls me, I'm, I'm blocking her number. If, if something happens, it takes us from a posture of defensiveness to offense. Not offensive offense where we're following Jesus aggressively we're following Jesus knowing there's going to be hardships knowing there's going to be challenges knowing there's going to be tests but saying bring them on and if I fail come at I'll, I'll do it again I'll just try again because in this in this walk we get to try again it's beautiful this is this is something uh, really powerful um, I want you to identify what you can do today because I believe there's something in your life that you can do today that you can get past some test coming at you in your life. There's a right, a hard right choice you can make today over an easy wrong choice you can make. And I want you to look at it as if something great is waiting on the other side of that test. Because something is. Something great is waiting on the other side of that tent of that test. Report the right numbers on your taxes. Give that $20 back. Block that old friend that keeps trying to message you. Sit far away from those kids that are cheating on all the school tests. The minute that you see something is wrong, like David in the first story, let your integrity and your conscience spring into action. Be proactive about choosing integrity over false blessing and pass the test that leads to triumph. Don't let these false blessings just happen to you. Oh, good, cool. A little bit of um, affirmation, a little bit of money coming my way. No, don't let these false blessings happen to you. Better yet, it's a test that you can pass to excel in the promotion that God wants to bring to your life. Now, here's the thing. Here's, here's something that you need to hear today. Because I, I know some of you felt like, well, I've already been through stuff like that, and I didn't do good. I failed. I, I, I failed the test, or I, I was tempted, and I succumbed, just like David in the second story. When he slept with Bathsheba. Let me tell you, our, our decisions do have consequences. And it's sad because I, I've had to face that, and I know you have too. You've made a decision that came back to hurt you. See what happened with David in that story? He slept with Bathsheba. She got pregnant, and they lost that baby. It was devastating for him. It was devastating for her. I mean, if, if any of you have lost a loved one like that, you know how painful that is. How devastating it can be. And he, David, was, was absolutely wrecked. But you know what he did? He ran to God and said, Lord, I, I blew it. I know I blew it. I'm so sorry. I blew it. I messed up. And he wrote this song in Psalm 51 that said, create in me a clean heart. Oh, God. God, I'm so sorry. I messed it up. Renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Renew a right spirit within me. See, David did what we all can do. We can run back to God and say, Lord, I'm just, I'm, I messed it up, but I'm sorry. And you want to know what happened? David had another son with that same girl. God ended up restoring, and that son's name was Solomon. Solomon was the greatest king Israel ever had. He was the wisest, he was the wealthiest, he took the most territory, he built the Lord's temple. Your greatest victory can come from the ashes of your greatest defeat. If you would just call on God in the midst of that defeat, in the midst of that failure, in the midst of that shortcoming, if you would just say, God, I'm so sorry, I come to you, I repent, please make me new, your greatest achievements can come from your worst failures. 
Am I preaching to anybody today? Anybody that's going through anything hard? Anybody that's ever been through anything hard? And you think, oh, well, that's the end. That's it. That's over. God hates me. God's done with me. But if we would just repent and return to him, our greatest achievements can come from our greatest failure. We need to know that the nature of our God is that of forgiveness and restoration. Oh, he loves it. He loves to restore us. He loves to forgive. That's why his word says that if I would just confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. He wants to take your loss and turn it into legacy. Only our God can take mistakes and turn them into miracles. That's what he wants to do. Only our God can take hurt and turn it into healing. Only our God can take the death of your dream and use it to disclose your true destiny. You ever thought about that? When you failed in something and God's going to use that to disclose what you were meant to do from birth? That's amazing. Only our God can take a test and turn it into a testimony. Only our God can turn death into life. That's what we celebrated last week. That's what we celebrate every single day as followers of Christ. That he turns dead things into live things. He turns my dead dreams into alive dreams. He turns my failure into success. And he turns my repentance and my sadness into dancing and joy. That's what he does. And that's what he wants to do in your life. That's what he wants to do. I hope you came to church today expecting that he would do that. Or if you came to church today not knowing that's who God was or that's what he wants to do, I need you to know today that's what he wants to do. He wants to take your test and turn it into your testimony. He wants to take your brokenness and turn it into your freedom. He wants to use a dead thing and bring it alive. And that's exactly what God wants to do for you today. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Father God, I pray for open hearts and open minds this morning. Lord, I know there are some of us here that have, not, that have never heard a message like this, that have never heard the gospel preached like this, that have never heard the fact that God wants to do wonderful things in our life despite the fact that we have failed, despite the fact that we may have messed up. But Lord, I, I ask that you would communicate in your own way. Speak to the stillness of our hearts right now in this moment. That the mistakes that we've made, the choices that we've made, the, wrong, the easy wrong choices that we've made. Lord, would you use them to disclose our freedom? I want to speak to two groups of people today with, with heads down and eyes closed. I want to speak to you today. If you used to have a relationship with Jesus that was tight, but something happened along the way. Maybe you used to be close with God. Maybe you used to be tight with Jesus. Maybe you used to be walking step in and step out with him, but something happened. Maybe something happened to you. Maybe you made a decision. Or maybe you just drifted. One thing leads to another, and you just drifted from that relationship with God. I want to give you an opportunity in a moment to restart that relationship with Jesus. I want to speak to another group of people. Maybe you're here today, and you've, you've never considered the fact that you want to start a relationship with someone who can take my pain and turn it into something powerful. Maybe you've never even considered this before, but I want to speak to you today. If, you, if you've never considered having a relationship with Jesus, I want you to consider that right now. And I want to give you an opportunity in just a moment to say, Lord, I, I'm, like, I'm like that guy David. I just, I want you to forgive me where I've messed up and restore unto me the joy that I know belongs there. I want you to restore under me the joy of that salvation. Make me new. And if you're in any of those two categories, if you used to have a relationship with Jesus, want to start it again, or if you've never had a relationship with Jesus, want to start one today, if that's you, I want you to lift your hand. One, two, three. Go ahead. Lift it up high, high in the sky. Go ahead. Do it bold. You can do it. That's all right. Amen. I see your hand. God sees your hand. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's pray this prayer together for the sake of the, of, the, of the person that gave their life to Jesus this morning. Let's pray this prayer together. If you believe it, say it with me. Father God, I give my life to you. Forgive me of my sins and make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
And I thank you for everything you've done and everything you have yet to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we clap our hands? Oh, it's my favorite part of every single Sunday is seeing somebody say yes. I want to I want to restart or I want to start fresh. So if you made that decision today or if you didn't have the courage to raise your hand, um, I, I want to give you three steps. Three steps for everyone who's made this decision. Step number one is I want you to sign up to get baptized. I want you to go ahead and sign up to get baptized. Uh, if you gave your life to Jesus, what we do, what we're about to do in just a few minutes is we're going to baptize some people. What baptism is is an outward sign of an inward decision that you made today. Now, we're going to be baptizing in just a few minutes, but if you want to give time for your friends and family to come with you, I totally understand that. Our next baptism is happening on May 20th, and you can get it done in either service. We would love to take that step with you. If you gave your life to Jesus today or gave your life back to Jesus, the second thing I'd love for you to do is sign up for one of our life groups. Life groups is where we come together and you meet those 2 a.m. friends. When, when things are falling apart and you've been in a life group for eight weeks or 12 weeks, those are the people you know well enough to call at 2 in the morning and say, you know what, I just need some prayer. And they're the ones that are going to pray for you in those moments. Life is better together and you will never experience all that Lifeline has to offer until you get into one of our life groups. Thing number three I'd love for you to do, if you raised your hand for Jesus today or if you're making that decision, one thing that I would love for you to do in the next step for you would be to join a church, joining a church family. You know, there's a lot of great churches out there, many great churches in this community, but you know what? We like this church, and we like you, so if you'd like to join this church, you can do that right after service, this service, the second service, at 1230 through our growth track. It's in the family room, child care is provided, food is provided, so we just make it real easy for anyone to, to roll right in and be a part of us. I want everyone to go ahead and stand to your feet with me. One thing we like to do around here is before I let you go, and I'm going to switch mics really fast because we're about to have some baptisms coming, but one thing I like to do is I like to send everybody home with a blessing because, you know, throughout this, this life and your world that we don't is that we can have some curses thrown our way, but you know what? When you come to church, you deserve to leave with a blessing, and I just believe that. So if you're ready to receive a blessing, go ahead and hold your uh, hands out in front of you like this. If you're not comfortable doing that, that's all right. The important thing is that your heart is, is ready to receive a blessing and that you believe God really does want to bless you because he does. Lord, I pray over every single person listening. I pray for the people on Facebook that don't have the privilege of being here right now. Lord, I pray a blessing over every relationship represented in this place. Lord, I pray reconciliation for uh, broken marriages, broken friendships, broken relationships. Lord, I pray for that reconciliation to occur. Lord, I, I pray, I do, I pray every marriage in this place would be blessed. Every single friendship in this place would be blessed. Every single child in this place would be blessed. Every single parent would be blessed. Lord, that when we put you first in the midst of our relationships, that relationship will be blessed. Thank you, God. And Lord, I pray over the finances of the church right now. Lord, that we would learn Matthew 6, 33, that says that we would, that we would seek first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added to us. Lord, that we would live to learn like we're standing right now with open hands. We would learn to live givers because you are the greatest giver. You love the world so much that you gave your one and only son that when we learn to seek you first and live our, our lives like this, that promotions would come, that raises would come, that we would be the head and not the tail, the lender, not the borrower, Lord, and that, that the church would thrive. The people of God would thrive when we learn to put you first. Lord, I, I pray for blessing over, over everyone's finances. And lastly, I pray for our health. I pray for the health of this church physical, psychological, mental, and emotional health of this church. By your stripes, we are healed. We absolutely believe that in the name of Jesus. And I pray healing over every single person here struggling with any kind of illness, any kind of uh, mental, psychological disability, Lord. I pray that medications wouldn't be needed. Thank God for them. Thank God for medications and doctors. But, Lord, I'm praying for a miracle in this place. I'm praying that we would break through and that we would be a testimony to your goodness. Lord, I pray for the healing of this church. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. And we're about to have some baptisms in here. So get excited. All right, all right. We love doing baptisms here. We, You can go ahead and have a seat. Um, 
we love being able to share just a special time. And, you know, we believe that baptism is that public de declaration of I'm choosing Jesus. Amen. And so we love celebrating baptism. So we have two very special ladies that are going to get baptized this morning. So let's just give them a hand. This is Peyton. Go ahead and give her another round of applause. Because this is a big deal. It can be kind of scary being in front of everyone. So you have great courage, girlfriend. So go ahead and tell us why you want to be baptized today. Because I want Jesus to be in my heart. you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Everybody, this is Taryn, and Taryn is choosing to get baptized this morning because she wants to serve Jesus. Amen. All right, Taryn, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I have decided to follow Jesus. Anybody else? We got extra towels. Water's warm. 